Hi, everybody. This is Ray, and this is Life and Vibe. And today, I wanted to kind of walk you through the process I use to determine when I'm getting health information, especially from content creators on YouTube that are in my suggested feed, if the information they're giving is actually really good information. So before we start this, let me just pull out my fair use statement real quick because I'll show you why this becomes important very soon. So yeah, this is obviously a creator here in the United States and I'll be making commentary as a licensed registered nurse with a decade as a registered nurse and 15 years in the healthcare industry. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows this video is for education and information purposes only and is not to do any type of treatment or diagnosis. If you do find topics around health, around cancer, around cancer diagnoses, any of these types of topics, I do suggest that you click away and uh, just keep your mental health safe at all times. So I gave a little bit of background uh, about my licensure. I do have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. I also have a year, over a year of postgraduate studies towards becoming a nurse practitioner. I have specialized in heart nursing or cardiac nursing in that field. And the second that I spent a lot of time in was oncology slash hematology, which is fancy terms for cancer and blood disorders. And I have worked in a variety of settings for this particular uh, specialty in medicine. I've worked both inpatient as a charge nurse on an oncology floor with patients we were actively treating. We, I have also worked in radiation oncology, working with the patients coming in to get that for their variety of treatments too. In a cancer center, I've worked outpatient at a cancer center, working with the physician as his direct nurse, and obviously working with patients because we had the infusion center there. And so it was just, you know, following up. A lot of times it could be people who were getting the diagnosis for the first time to patients who were following up because they were in remission. So we had every stage of the cancer patients in between. I also did end of life care for these patients, uh, inpatient and doing case management in the home for hospice. So I've had a fair amount of experience um, in this topic and I'm so sorry to have pointed out so much of my experience. I know that people tell me that they don't want to hear about the medical. Um, they don't care about what the experience is. But I do believe that experience does matter and experience in the respect of education and licensure. Um, so, you know, there's nothing to say that life experience is not important too. But whether that you then educate people around those topics and how you do that, uh, it, it then kind of goes into an area where you potentially could be doing um, you know, things that need to be debunked. And the reason why is because I see things like retirement transform show up in my feed. Okay, so let's make them a tiny, tiny bit bigger because I promise you, they're very, um, very clear that their material is copyrighted and not, and that I need permission before I make any commentary on them. And that's not what the fair use policies say. So I'm going to transform your content and ensure that it's under fair use guidelines at all time. And so you'll probably see that I'm not going to have their videos as large as me, maybe. Um, just I might go a little bit smaller like this, um, but I'm going to be very careful because I don't want anything that Mark and Jody don't think I'm not transforming their content with commentary potentially uh, criticism, but I will be doing some teaching about how do you find really good, um, you know, how do you debunk what they're saying? 
because people may just believe what they're saying without realizing that some of the information is actually not correct. Okay, so let's get over to their page. So the Mark and Jody retirement <laughs> transform showed up in my feed, not because of the retirement part, I wish, um, but because of another video. Okay. So I'm going to go over and pop over and show you. Okay, so we got Mark and Jody over here. And the reason why I was suddenly saw them is they had a video show up on my feed. And it was over here on this page. And it said, 10 habits that cause colon cancer. And I explained to you a little bit of my passion. I've also had a family member passed very young from the disease at 34, a very long time ago. And so I, I do have a lot of, you know, empathy in their situation. Let's put it this way. That's not what I'm here to judge. And then, well, maybe a little bit. The rise of colon cancer and how to change your habits. The rise of colon cancer. Remember that title, okay? Because we're going to debunk that very soon too. Okay. There's a lot of statistics they give, none of which have cited sources. And we're going to then debunk a lot of these statistics because this is where this is like clickbait, problematic, could scare people. And I don't find it very educational, even though it's wrapped up in this educational bundle. And then I'm still trying to figure out which 10 things so comes along with me. Write down whatever 10 things you felt you heard from these two. So I don't feel like I heard 10 things. Anyway, let's learn a little bit more about who they are. What medical background do they have? Because, you know, that's a pretty, pretty serious topic to get into. All right. So they do tips on lifestyle retirement planning. <laughs> now we're going to look at a little bit of the age recommendations. And it's almost outside of the retirement age now in the United States of 72, okay? So think that people generally through retirement, especially now, the 62 is very rare. Most people are starting to retire here in the United States from 67 to 72, and maybe even later than that. So we'll show you why then um, this isn't really the necessarily the only target age group for this disease. <laughs> But it's in a retirement channel. All right. So they're going to not give financial advice. Okay. So they are prefacing because you get in a lot of YouTube trouble if you try to give financial advice and you're not licensed to do so, I believe. And then you put it under the monetization uh, category of finance or something. Because we'll show you why in a moment for monetization and how that works, which is fascinating. All right. So. They want to, you know, help people make the best years of their life during that time. And this channel is for them. All right. So it's going to be purpose, passion, and clarity of retirement transformed. I still am not sure what Mark and Jody's professional background was. I'm really not sure. But they're going to give us this stuff. Okay. So what are they going to talk about? Well, physical health and wellness, of course, because nothing sells like health and wellness. And I particularly like my information from unlicensed medical professionals. Uh, mental healthy and wellness. Okay, we're going to be mental healthy and get some wellness there. Okay. Is they're not licensed psychotherapists or counselors or anything or psychiatrists from what I've read. Uh, I know I'm laughing, but it's difficult when these people get into these types of topics all the time and you're reading and you're like, but other than just being just people, what, what is your experience to actually talk with any education on all these topics? Are you actually helping or harming more? And I always ask this relationships or other retiree stories, travel and leisure or leisure, whichever way you prefer to say, inspirational authors and more. Yes, my voice is a little rough tonight or today, sorry, because I did a lot yesterday. I'm tired. Okay. So I sound rough. All right. Thank you. Okay. So let's go over to the video. 
Now, we're only going to play a moment, and then we're going to bring up YouTube's fair use policy, okay? So let's get over here. So when I go to a video like this, okay, I want to bring up this creepy smile first, because when you hear the news they're about to deliver, and this is all their video analytics, and I don't mind sharing that for a second, um, they (laughs) just look at the smile, and then you're going to hear the story that Mark delivers. And you're going to be wondering why she's smiling very soon. Okay. All right. So the rise of colon cancer. How to change your habits to protect yourself. Wow. That's pretty uh, clickbaity. That's really, that is going to get people to watch. And they've had 140,000 views almost since March of this year. And it's one of their highest rated videos, by the way. So yeah and uh even though they're sharing a family member's uh very sad news it's uh you'll see in a moment uh the video is still monetized (laughs) all right so they're putting all these retirement hashtags into a topic around health and wellness and they're gonna give you a download to the CR some this fight CRC. Um, there's a free colorectal cancer facts and stats. Okay. Is that one of their sources that they use? Potentially. They haven't said it's the sources that they cite. And then they're gonna talk about it becoming increasingly prevalent among under 50. Okay, by 2030, it's expected to claim the most lives among this age group. Okay, with devastating implications. Currently, colon cancer is the top cause of death, cancer death in men. (laughs) So I'm not sure where they got that statistic from, because that's not what I saw. And I'm going to show the the, the cancer causes for mortality, at least in the United States, (laughs) where they come from. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that's wrong here. This is why this is very, can be inciting to people. And the second in women, trailing only behind breast cancer. I think that may be the only statistic they have right. (laughs) And I don't even know if that's not correct either. (laughs) I don't believe. Not from what I saw. (laughs) Well, look at the ones. Because I think lung cancer still has them both beat, by the way. Just just saying. Because there was that thing called lung cancer. It's just gone. <laughs> so we're going to look at some of these statistics. And so this is why I'm already like, oh, my goodness, look at this information. Okay. Because I will check the statistics out. I don't mind. And so they're going to talk talking about the growing prevalence of colorectal cancer, urging you to take control of your health through lifestyle assessments, screenings, and proactive habits. At the end, we share these actionable steps to kickstart your journey toward better colon health. Great, because just what we need, two unlicensed individuals telling us how to kickstart off our colon cancer journey because we don't want to talk to the doctor. How dare we? All right. And then I know I sound sarcastic sometimes, but this, I mean, I'm sorry. I am a little bit sarcastic, I say sometimes, because this is, you know, I'm going to show you how that is so scary when you read what they just wrote. Not that cancer is not scary, because I have some statistics, but these aren't backed by any statistics. And I don't see any cited sources here. And this is a red flag for me as a healthcare professional, when I go in to see these types of videos coming out. So this is like 10 red flags or more to Mark and Jody's colon cancer video, because I don't know if we even got 10 things out of them on the video either. They certainly didn't list out 10. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Let me go. So then Mark's got a book you can buy. He's got obviously useful financial tools. They do health and finance because that's how you want your professionals to be. You want them to be a master, you know, of, you know, what's it? <laughs> what is it? Of all and, and master of none or something. I can't remember the saying. Write it down below. 
Uh, there's a free retirement checklist. There's Mark's book, of course. Uh, the Evolving Man, the Life Virtues Men Don't Talk About. Okay. I'm sure. And then they have chapters. Um, remember, it's 10 things. It was excessive consumption of processed meats, not physically active, smoking, lack of regular screening, review, and adjust lifestyle choices. <laughs> okay. I don't see 10 still, but we'll see. Okay. So a little bit more about this couple. And so I'm kind of looking because I'm like, all right, I still want to know kind of what your background is. Like, oh, I've already read a lot of things that I went to check. I check my statistics from people if I'm not seeing it from a verified source. And I uh, was already a little nervous. So they're a husband and wife duo. It's Mark and Jody Rollins, inspiring serve as personal guides. Okay, so is it a coaching business thing? Or are they trying to sell a coaching business? I always feel like I'm feeling the life coaching. I know people love to be life coaches. There's a lot of unlicensed, unregulated life coaches who do not have any psychology backgrounds. And yes, people that do get certified in trying to help people manage their lives usually have backgrounds in psychology and experience in that field. And then they will take adjacent types of, you know, courses or I think there's a way that they get into what's known as like life coaching, but they're literally psychologists helping people with it, not just a husband and wife duo. Okay. Sorry. I just always want to point that out because this is why this gets murky to me. Guides to meaningful transformational journeys for individuals who are planning for going through or are living in retirement. This is everything in retirement beyond your financial plan. And I think that they initially probably wanted to get into the financial side of retirement planning, um, but they're not licensed, so they always have to point that out. And then at some point, I don't know if they started to add health topics in order to kind of cast a wider net, or they had always intended to bring health in. But that's what they also do, <laughs> neither of which they're seemingly licensed or certified to do. And they say it quite clearly. They're not financial advisors or medical experts. <laughs> okay, so why talk so liberally on these topics? Any advice we give is our own. and should not be taken as professional advice. Yeah, but you quoted up a lot of these very scary statistics up here that could actually make people very frightened. And a lot of these facts aren't correct. And you don't cite your sources. That's dangerous, in my opinion. And it's just informational entertainment purposes only. And so we hope that they've listed it under entertainment. And then it's obviously please seek professional assistance before making any financial decisions or changes that could affect your physical or mental health. Okay, so you're like, okay, finally I say, like, oh, I've talked to your doctor, but we're going to sit here and monetize this video. And then some links above, mentioned above may be affiliate links, earn a small commission, you know, buy products. Of course, of course there could be affiliate links. Why wouldn't there be? These two aren't not going to take an opportunity to monetize. And then all content video segments are copyright and owned by retirement transform and cannot be used without permission really oh let's just double check old youtube's fair use policy real quick you know just to make sure i'm not gonna get in trouble okay fair use is a legal doctrine that says use of copyright protected material under certain circumstances is allowed without permission from the copyright holder YouTube gets many requests to remove videos that copyright holders claim are infringing under copyright law. Okay, they wanted to highlight that. Okay, sometimes these requests will apply to videos that qualify for copyright exceptions. Or seems like clear examples of fair use. Because this video is transformative. You say that's how it works. 
All right. So there's all different types of, you know, copyright. And if a copyright holder believes a video doesn't qualify for an exception, you must provide us with adequate explanation as to why. So there needs to be adequate explanation, Mark and Jody, as to why my video is not commentary, how it's not transformative, how it's not educating, and how it's not being used under fair use. So just want to make sure they understand. And then here in the United States specifically, it says, and I just wanted to point this out because they were very clear. And I have a feeling that Mark and Jody have a retirement transformation would be the type of people who would definitely want to get my video down. In the United States, works of commentary, criticism, research, teaching, or news reporting may be considered fair use. Well, this is going to fall under commentary, criticism. There's going to be definitely some teaching here. And I did do some um, uh, uh, research because I'm going to show all sorts of statistics that are going to debunk the statistics given by old Mark and Jody. And then there's all sorts of factors for fair use here in the United States, which is the countries that we would be dealing with, and they can decide what's considered. But it's just going to be a lot of, you know, this is what they're going to say. And they're basically saying that you need to talk to an attorney before you take the time to do a copyright removal request. So I obviously double check my videos to make sure there's no copyright issues before I publish and upload. And, uh, you know, there's a transparency report. So, yeah, it's going to fall under a lot of this with looking at this video. <laughs> So let's get over to some of these uh, cancer statistics real fast. The ones that I wanted to specifically highlight here, um, just because they talked about all these different statistics about who's dying of what, at, you know, what age. And uh, let me see if I can actually make just for this one time this bigger. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see. And I apologize if this video is getting long, but I got very passionate about this topic when I kind of found this video. And this is how I would look at stuff as far as making sure that it is verified. Okay, so here we're going to be finding out um, estimated uh, cases of these different cancers in men and women. And obviously estimated deaths here as well. And they're obviously letting us know that this is actually coming from um, the 2024 statistics from the United States. Um, it's from the American Cancer Society is the source providing these statistics. So as we can see, the highest number of people Oh, sorry, for men, the highest diagnosed cancer is prostate, okay? Doesn't mean that that's the number who die from it, but that's the highest diagnosed. There's a lot of men that are able to get it treated and uh, have survived. There's lung and bronchus, you know, that lung cancer that they seemingly totally forgot about in the, their cancer statistics. Um, and there's colon and rectal cancer right there. So those are the three. For women, it's breast, followed by lung, followed by colon rectal. But those are cases, okay, not deaths. Death a little different. Okay. So when we look at men, and these were the 2024, it was lung and bronchus. So still lung cancer is still the leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. And yes, it's falling because people are smoking less. Now what the trajectory that colon cancer was going to be on the rise, I would be interested to see that statistic. I looked a few statistics up, and it wasn't what I was reading about colorectal cancer. And there's different reasons why the age group's gone younger, too. And that's a whole other conversation. And obviously, it's to do with the earlier we detect, then it's better. And we've just realized we needed to detect earlier. Uh, you will hear what happens. <laughs> anyway, so. 
these are those. Okay, so the top three male deaths for cancer is lung is the first, is the leading cause. The second is prostate. And then the third is colon, which I do not believe are the statistics that Mark and Jody quoted in their description. And then over here at female, it's lung and bronchus. It even has your percentages right here. Followed by breast, pancreas, colon, and rectal. Okay. So those are the 2024 statistics. <laughs> but I'm seeing over here, and we'll get back over to Mark and Jody's page. Let me make sure they're small first. I would, I would dare to think that they would think I'm not transforming their content at all. I know they're going to copyright strike me anyway. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, does it? All right. So, all right. It's expected to claim the most lives among this age group. Okay. With devastating implications. Uh, we'll take a look by 2030 because we'll see which thing tends to take people out. All right. Currently, colon cancer, top cause of cancer death in men. Uh, not that I saw. It's, 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 it's lung cancer followed by prostate, then colorectal. This is the third, and that's 2024 statistics from the American Cancer Society. I don't see your sources here. And second in women trailing only behind breast cancer. It's actually fourth. It trails behind lung, breast, pancreatic, and then it was colorectal cancer. So neither of those are correct facts. We tell you, we talk about the growing prevalence of colorectal cancer. This is actually more statistics showing that it's decreasing quite substantially, actually. <laughs> it's actually gone down a lot, believe it or not. <laughs> I know hearing young people have it is scary because my cousin died of it in 2000 at the age of 34. So I understand it's scary. But uh, I would like to give statistics that make people not so scared. So let's hear the first part of Mark and Jody. And I, I will show that uh, time. I will get over and show you where the actual statistics are for the... Um, deaths and leading causes of death and all these different things that we have um just so that you know really which are things that are leading and how that kind of affects people uh, this you know this is why this is problematic to me okay let me get them going because i know i've been very long-winded but i think facts are important <sighs> okay all right i uh, just check out judy jody's sorry jody's smile here <laughs> It's very, it's not a great start when you see them smiling. All right, 30 minutes. I need to get the start. But like I said, I have to really fair use and transform this video. All right, guys, let's go. My 38-year-old son, Markham, never expected the doctor to lean in and tell him he had stage four colon cancer. And when he called us, we were devastated. Clearly a parent's nightmare. You know, we always thought this disease was reserved why did you start out smiling, Jody, when you're about to deliver the news that your 38-year-old son leaned in and told you he had stage four colon cancer on your monetized affiliated linked video? <laughs> and I have the proof to show that you're monetized, by the way. But you're only under education and informational purposes only. <laughs> or informational or entertainment, sorry. Uh, entertainment purposes. Sorry. Okay. I have to transform. Let them, you know, and I, like I said, I lost someone very young. I have empathy. But I, not when you're making money from your son's diagnoses. That's tacky. That's tacky, in my opinion. Because it's serious. And I wonder how your son feels about that. Maybe he's used to it. Okay. 
for men and women over the age of 50. But really, of all cancers, colorectal cancer will take the most lives of people under the age of 50 by 2030. Devastating facts. And among adults under 50, CR Okay. Um, are they going to let me know that they're going to put links to these statistics down below? Or are they going to cite any of their sources? That would be interesting to know. <laughs> so, for example, just a moment ago when I was sharing uh, the statistics from my uh, cancer, <laughs> they're using, this was from the uh, American, um, it was from an actual, sorry, let me try to bring up the actual, it was from a cancer, a cancer journal for clinicians. So it was their journal. And they were summarizing the 2024 cancer statistics, which often are coming all from the National Center for Health Statistics, which we're going to look at one of their data sheets shortly. So I always kind of want to let people know um, that the information is from legitimately cited sources that, you know, it's not just Miss Jody out here you know, stating, you know, these really scary, scary things. I mean, it sounds scary, man, when she's talking about it. It's, you know, everyone's like all of these uh, different statistics that can be quite scary for people. And so, but I'm going to try to debunk some of that, as I said. Okay. Let's keep going with these two. I know I'm taking PRC a long is the top cause of cancer death in men, and it's the second in women right behind breast cancer. Not a great way to open because the facts are just really terrifying. No, we want you to. Well, those aren't facts <laughs> because I just brought up the cancer statistics that are based on the national, <laughs> which are based on the national, let me make sure I say the name right, the uh National Center for Health Statistics coming out of the CDC. Thank you. Right. <laughs> it's a lot of names to remember. That's not what they state. And these are 2024 cancer statistics. So why are you petrifying people like this? And you look very smugged and satisfied about it too, Miss Jody. Scary. It is scary stuff when you're giving false information out to people to stick with us today because this is critically important because when we look at men and women combined colorectal cancer or crc is the second most common cause of cancer death but here's some good news okay that's about the only statistic that they actually get correct now i want to debunk this again and i'm gonna we're gonna go to another uh statistics page <laughs> and so this is for people who do enjoy medical content I'm just going to point it out. Okay. I'm going to share this tab real quick. All right. So I wanted to make sure that I went and checked the National Centers for Health Statistics and what they said about colorectal cancer. And this is all from 2024. And I will link and cite my sources down below in my description box so you can follow up and look at these. Okay. So. I wanted to look at mortality trends, which means death trends, okay? <laughs> that means people dying from cancer, morbidity and mortality. Morbidity, you have comorbidities. That means like diseases. Those are the morbidities. Even though it sounds like morbid would be probably death, but no, it's actually to do with the diseases, okay? The mortality rates are the death rates. So morbidity rates are the number of people that would have those diseases. For example, how many people have diabetes and mellitus type 2? And then, the, you know, <laughs> those would be sort of morbidity compared to how many people died of diabetes mellitus. That would be the mortality rate. They don't split between one and two, unfortunately, that I could see. All right, here we go. 
so just to highlight this part, I know I'm explaining a lot, but this is the sort of thing as a medical professional, I think when I see these two here, long-term reductions in mortality for colorectal cancer, that's the acronym for a CRC, the second most common cause of cancer death in men and women combined. That's very different than saying it's the second for men and the second for women because that's not correct based on the statistics. For men, I believe it was prostate and for women, I believe it was breast, both behind lung cancer for male and female. This is about combining the gender populations and then of all the cancers, colorectal came in second. Obviously, behind our friend the lung cancer, which is not our friend, obviously. But they seem to be one that, you know, they talk about smoking, yet they emitted lung cancer somehow. That's why a lot of these things, they, they scare me because people are like, oh, I'm so glad you shared this information. What information? You have no real true statistics and there's no cited sources. You're just scaremongering people, Mark and Jody. Okay, so it says long-term reductions in mortality or death for colorectal cancer. <laughs> long-term reductions. They talked about the rise, remember? Now, there needs to be obviously, you know, age and all sorts of things. And this doesn't go into this just in this paragraph. It, you really get into the weeds of statistics when you look at that. It's not the blanket statements that old Mark and Jody are making. Mm. It's men and women combined, okay, have resulted from changing patterns and risk factors which is good, like smoking reductions and screening uptakes. So even though we've had, there's other uh, causes to lung cancer too that can be environmental as well, other than just the smoking, which obviously still is a pretty leading cause, as well as from improved treatment. So we've got less people smoking. We have more people taking screenings and we have improved treatments. And this is actually helped the risk for colorectal cancer improve. I mean, like decreasing its risk. All right. It says the colorectal cancer death rate has dropped. And this is a significant amount by 55% among males since 1980 and by 60% among females since 1969. The rate in women began declining before 1969, but those data are not exclusive of cancer in the small intestine. So now we actually separate it even further out into, you know, cancer site locations than they did prior to 1969. Contemporary trends in colorectal cancer are remarkably similar by sex, with rates decreasing during the most recent decade of 2012 to 2021 by 1.8% year per year in both men and women. But the media and, you know, kind of scare people and don't understand that we found it was just beneficial to start screening younger. So we are catching younger people with it because we realize it's not just a disease of the aging. That was probably false thinking initially by people. We just started finding it probably more progressed in older people. Maybe we just didn't, you know, it, it was just the wrong focus. But that's, it was just that the medical industry didn't focus that uh, in the right area. And that's not because we suddenly see it in younger people. We just realized it does affect young people as well. It wasn't just a disease of the aging. It's not that anything's changed. We actually have less people being diagnosed. All right, let me stop getting boring because I know people don't want to hear this. But this is important because this is not very true. They've got almost, they have a lot of views on it. 
and they've made money on this and, and it is dangerous because these statistics are scaring people and we need to be educating people correctly and well but also not scaring but jesus out of people too okay keep going on your video i'm transforming your content i'm sharing this tab instead let me make sure i don't you know we'll get through this i know this is a long video but these are the types of things that are concerning to me when i see creators on social media platforms and the information they give especially regarding health and then they try to stop medical professionals from critiquing their videos by throwing their copyright because i'm sure they wouldn't give me permission to talk about their video not in the way i'm speaking about it we'll play a bit more and then i'm going to show you about monetization on this video with early Makes detection sense. it's 100 curable so and really what we want is for you to feel a sense that you can take control of your health today in this area early detection 100 curable I don't like using statistics like 100%. I think the uh, the earlier, obviously, you detect it and they can remove polyps, decreases your risk of having the cancer. Um, I don't like to use, you know, or, or if, you know, maybe in the early stages, you do have more treatment options. I just don't like to use terms like 100% without a statistic behind it. So I, you know, I mean, I just think that you wouldn't certainly want to do that to a cancer patient just in case something changed. It's, cancer is, you know, if, if anything gets into that lymphatic system, I mean, you just don't say that. Promise you, the attorneys wouldn't like it, or they would like it probably. By assessing your lifestyles and making any necessary adjustments and having your regularly scheduled screenings, your future self will definitely thank you for that. You know, and probably <laughs> I would always say that it doesn't matter what age, if you want to make beneficial lifestyle changes, it's always of benefit. Unfortunately, with things like colon cancer, because it is potentially having from lifestyle risks, uh, the earlier you start those risks and continue them, the more likelihood then to that cancer. So if you've been doing these habits for the age up to retirement, then yeah, you definitely want to modify. But uh, a lot of these things start when you're younger is what I'm trying to say. So you should make those changes real early. All right. Keep educating us, Mark and Jody, or entertaining us with information. Oh, and the other thing is our daily choices shape our health. We, we talk about that all the time. But understanding and adjusting harmful habits is really your first line of defense against colon cancer. And Ruby is eating a very active today. Eating a what? Eating a Sharpie. Okay. Well, let's not let her do that. Okay. Sharpie safe. Sharpie safe. So, you know, we hear people all the time say things like, I just find it odd that Jody's smiling <laughs> in the video where they talked about their son having such a dramatic stage four colon cancer diagnosis. I was devastated when I found out my cousin. I don't know if I could be as jovial as Judy on the topic. I almost cried a minute ago. My cousin was dead for a quite an extended period of time. Oh, Jody, you're going to be, I hope you, it goes well. You know, I'm only 35. I feel great. How could I possibly get colon cancer? And some people, especially women, will say, oh, colon cancer, that's a men's disease. And it really isn't. You know, this past weekend, uh, yeah, this past weekend, we were out in Arizona. No, you're right. It doesn't seem to be gender specified, but it's number four for women and number three for men. And men and women combined, it's the second leading cause of mortality. It's very different. Number one, still long, sadly. At the Colaguard Classic, which is the men's senior tour golf tournament, put on by what's Colaguard. Colaguard, the company, which is an early detection test. Company. Yeah, do you remember the name of the company? Okay, so they're promoting Colaguard, 
and a color guard golf tournament classic. Very odd. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, exact science. Exact sciences out in yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. And there was a speaker at one of the dinners, a 20, maybe a 32 year old woman who was detected with colon cancer at the age of 21, stage four. Okay, so they attended a golf tournament and it was sponsored by Cola Gold. And I don't know if they got free tickets or how they got to the tournament. And, you know, obviously Cola Gold was sponsoring the event. They brought out a patient and so forth. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so there, they're experts now. Oh, it gets better, I guess. I guess. And she's up there on stage telling her story about what happened and how her doctors kept telling her, just because you have blood in your stool, don't worry about it. You're probably stressed out. Don't think about it. But if you have any symptoms at all, and we're, we're I don't know any doctor who would tell somebody that blood in the stool is nothing to worry about. I always find that astounding because I think that's very, you know, often they may think it's hemorrhoids initially because that's what happened to my cousin because she was the same age, roughly. She had been experiencing symptoms of rectal bleeding and she sought to get help at her doctor's office. She also worked a lot, was very busy. So how diligent she was in following up. And this was in the late 1990s. And again, medicine just didn't think it was a disease that could affect young people. For whatever reason, it had just been detected more in older people. Now that could be partly because people had access to Medicare here in the United States. Because prior to uh, changes in the healthcare system, colorectal screenings were not covered as preventative care services. And people could be charged additional to have that screening. Now there were legislation that came and made it so that screenings for certain diseases is covered by insurance and does not come to subject as much for out-of-pocket costs to the patient. Maybe a very nominal cost, but not a lot. And so this has opened up the door since, I hate to say it, the Affordable Care Act for people to get preventative screenings covered by insurance. And this has meant that more people are being screened also too. So at this time in the 1990s, my cousin would have one had to have paid for it. So people weren't getting screened as much because they were working age. So they were getting screened at Medicare age when it was covered by the government. So people were finding it in 62 year olds because it falls into the age range. And from that, people thought it was from the elderly, you know, a disease of aging. But in reality, it really wasn't. That There are people younger who do get colorectal cancer. And it was through opening up preventative screenings through the Affordable Care Act that's been enabling us to see these statistics and start to get people treated earlier. People was, you know, like we said, we're seeing the numbers falling and it's because of the, the screenings and some of the risk factors changing and how doctors approach it now. And my cousin was told for a year she had hemorrhoids and then she finally went to an urgent care because she was not feeling good. And the doctor finally said, have you been screened for a colon cancer? And it was not a cancer that was in our family, at least on my maternal side, which was my first cousin. That was the side she was from. And she got a screening and sadly it was stage four. And she did it all, the chemo, all the treatments that they recommended at the time. And because she was so late, she couldn't get the bowel resected and it had spread. And sadly my cousin, lost her life. And so I certainly, I don't want to cry, encourage people to get these screenings. And so scaremongers like Mark and Jody, just be aware. We're watching you. We're going to put in a, a download to help you with that. You've got to speak to your doctor and you have to be your advocate. Absolutely. Now, listen, if you're new here, I'm Jody and this is my husband, Mark. And we don't focus.
I do believe in advocacy, but there are certain guidelines that you follow. So if you are 35 and you don't have a familial history or certain things happening, it is going to be difficult to get that screening. It is because currently the guideline is 45. And so that's what insurance is going to allow for, especially here in the United States. And so I guess until sadly we see more cases of 30 year olds than until that time, it may not change. There are some that are recommending 40 now. So we're realizing this is not a disease of aging. That's just one of the things that we need to capture people from a younger age. But the rate is still going down because of using screenings. It's difficult because we need so much debunking with these guys. Focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather we focus on lifestyle, health, relationships, and so much more. So please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified when our video... Why do you talk about health? You're not health professionals. Where This is why creators are problematic to me. If you're not trained to talk about topics around health, why do you discuss them? And give out bad statistics and information along with it. And don't cite your sources. Videos come out and share this with someone you care about who's on their retirement journey as well. You know, I just touched on the speakers uh, and the people that we met at the Color Guard Classic this past weekend. But who's the newscaster that's very passionate about this? Katie Couric. Katie Couric. Katie she Couric lost her first husband. Yeah. To Great. Just what we need. The Color Guard Golf Classic and Katie Couric. Because <laughs> I love, you know. People from corporate media being the mouthpiece for stuff. Because I don't think they're influenced by anyone. Colon cancer. So she's a huge advocate of this disease. And, you know, it's just not, it's not the old. I don't know what you say advocate for this disease. Advocate for screening against the disease or disease prevention. I don't think she advocates. Yay, colon cancer. <laughs> Man's disease that we used to hear about. Isn't yeah. It? And actually World Health Organization is pushing the colon, uh, the colon cancer screening, the colonoscopy, lower and lower and lower. And we are big advocates of that as well. Yeah, it used to be 50. 50. Whenever a man reached 50, they had to get their first um, colonoscopy. Right. Now it's 45. Right. But it really needs to be sooner than that. Yep. So that's a really important um, fact for us. And actually, the download that we're going to put in the top of the notes below is the colorectal cancer facts and stats from fightcrc.org, which is a great organization to learn more about colon cancer. Yes, because we don't want to go to a dot edu or you know we just want to go to a nonprofit that you know we can get to another golf classic for. Oh, these two are just just too much for me in some ways. Okay, so let's get over to the CDC because I you know there are some people who are talking about forty. So you know Jody over here likes to use obviously the world health organization with no cited sources as to her statistics from that um, center, which is not to say the World Health Organization doesn't have good statistics. They absolutely do. But I want to see her cite them somewhere. If you're 45 years or older, the time to get screened for your colorectal cancer is now, which is great because it's covered by the insurance here in the United States. I know other countries may have different standards, so check your country's guidelines and protocols. And your insurance is going to pay for it. That's even better. So it's just got to find, you know, and they'll let you know what types of tests they want you to do. Uh, but since colorectal screenings are covered through insurance, the doctor's probably going to give you the one that's known to have the most effective result. So visualizing inside your colon by a trained physician who does colonoscopies and he or she is they are looking up your colon because you've got it all cleaned out and they're that's the best that's like always what we call the gold standard in medicine okay that's going to give you your definitive answer and if it's covered by your insurance i would take the gold standard i know there's they're going to sell you the cologuard and there's times when a, a test like cologuard could potentially be an option but there's a lot of different things about it 
And I mean, it could increase, you know, things or get people who are scared of the colonoscopies. But I tell you, a lot of doctors are going to tell you to probably that you're, they're going to want you to get the test. Especially if you come in a little later past the certain ages and stuff. Or if you have family history. I mean, there's so much involved into what type of, of test. Okay. So 45. All right. That's what the CDC is saying. And I have heard potentially a push for 40. There needs to be more statistics to show us that by, you know, decreasing the age, it's going to give more benefit than harm. And that's what you always have to weigh up, that risk reduction in medicine. Rising colon cancer. I just read that it's gone down 55%. <laughs> That's what the National Centers for Health Statistics said. Connected with the CDC. Now, are these statistics to the United States or are these global statistics? Because I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm just going off the United States. I, I'm not saying that a global perspective is not important. But I'm just talking for where... Mark and Jody live. Because I think, you know, their audience is probably primarily here. So I'm just not sure. See, I don't know where they're citing their stuff for, which country. I'm giving stuff for the U.S. I'm not sure where Mark and Jody. Maybe they're global statistics. I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Let me go back. Sorry. I played them for a second. Let me go back. And I forgot to change my screen. I apologize. Let me take them back for a second. Sorry, Jody. Let me go back just a second where she says that, Paul. Hold on. All right, go the again. Rise go. in colon cancer. And what can you do to control that? And what are the things you should be aware of? That's what we hope to get into today. So let's jump in and stay to the end where we'll give you three steps that you can do right now to be proactive. Okay. So one of the things that's causing. Where is this 10 coming in? They said it was like the 10, you know, habits for the colon cancer or something. Where's 10? All right, keep going. Colon cancer among men and women is excessive consumption of processed meat, mm. cold cuts, sausages, bacon, hot dogs, turkey. Well, actually, they talk about more like low fiber and stuff. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to look at some more stuff that the CDC put out, okay? Because, like, I think we might have to look at some, like, uh, risk factors over here. <laughs> uh all right, we're coming over here to the risk factors. Uh, it does say a low fiber and high fat diet or diet high in processed meats. Well, look at you go, Mark and Jody. Okay, so either of these types of diets or a diet low in fruit and vegetables. Okay, so you if you just be you know there's different things here. But if you're not eating enough fruit and vegetables and you're eating a lot of this, then you are having more risk for that. Okay. All right. Well, so I agree. I don't eat meat. I certainly don't touch processed meats. I never have. So I agree. But it's not the first things they list. And there's one really important one that they never mention. But we will. And the sources cited from the registered dietitian are where to be found. They also very high in sodium. And we'll get to the heart disease very shortly. I'll, I'll bring up the, I, the all the leading causes of death at some point, just so we can break up Mark and Jody's video enough, because this is commentary and criticism for education purposes. Yeah, because it's not salted at all. Yeah, we have our standards. Well, good for you guys. 
We're going to do a little CDC quiz too. All right, keep going, Mark and Jody. You know what? You're going to irritate the carnivore diet people because they love that processed bacon. And the keto folks, be careful. Because Jodie's a registered dietitian here. <laughs> not that she's not correct. But I just rather hear this from a registered dietitian rather than Jodie. I'm sorry, because Jodie doesn't cite any of her sources. And she doesn't tell me what her background is, other than they're probably life coaches. And I don't think they come from a therapeutic background. I guess this is what they learned from the Cola Guard classic. The little talks they give, you know, to, you know, promote their products out to, to boomers like Mark and Jody. <laughs> Not to be wicked, but I've been to pharmaceutical talks, so I know. But I use, they usually have a physician, you know, and there's so many healthcare systems that don't like you anywhere near those folks. <sighs> Which is fine. I, I agree. You do need to remain physically active in your older years. It is more important than probably any time in your life. I think that we need to make sure we encourage our elderly or older seniors. I want to make sure I'm using the proper language because I can upset some people sometimes in the 65 plus age group. And I don't mean to by using language they don't find appropriate, but definitely always include more activity. So I agree with them on that. And so does the CDC. That if you're not physically active, because you actually need the movement of the body also to help you digest the food. You need that. It helps with the peristaltic movement. So that's why it's so beneficial to take a walk right after dinner. It actually helps your digestive system move along rather than sitting a meal and, and falling asleep on the couch. <laughs> it's much more beneficial to take a walk, even a short one. Well, you're, one, you're not medical professionals, so I don't expect you to. But it helps with the peristalsic movement of the stomach, and it helps with the digestive system because, surprisingly, your organs are active just like you are. And it what will happen is you're using energy, okay, more energy. That means that more glucose is going to move by the use of insulin it will open up your cells in your muscles and convert that to energy. And so obviously, if you are creating energy, it also goes to the cells of your organs to create the energy to have the movements. So if you are moving, then you're going to have a higher requirement for the blood sugar in your system. That means it's going to release the insulin from your pancreas, that insulin is going to open up the cells to organs, especially organs like the digestive system that use these sort of uh, movements, wave-like actions in order to move these waste products through the system. But let me have Mark and Jody explain, because they're very educated in these manner, especially Jody. She real smart.
Oh, because, you know, they're experts in liver cirrhosis, I'm sure, too. <laughs> but yes, obviously, alcohol is shown to be a contributing factor. Uh, we'll go over the CDCs and risk factors. Let's do that real quick. Let's go over and show some of the risk factors because we want to make sure that, you know, <laughs> I bring in my data sources. Okay. So these are some of the risk factors. Okay. One, it says risk of getting it increases as you get older. Okay. That's still what the CD say. As you get older, the, the risk for it, because a lot of times it could be potentially lifetime of habits and therefore your risk is starting to increase. Okay. So inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, unfortunately would make you more susceptible. A personal family history of colorectal cancer or colorectal polyps. This one I think people are very aware of now. And if you've had any family member, uh, not any, but, you know, especially close uh, relatives that have died, like my cousin, her son started to get his first screenings very young, like 21, and they did find polyps to remain. They were all benign, thankfully, but he's having to be screened very regularly because obviously his mom died so young from the disease. A genetic syndrome, which I know that some of the people spoke about, of the Familial adenomatous polyposis and the hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer, which is also known as Lynch syndrome. So there is a, you know, genetic um, predisposition as well. So there are also lifestyles. So that's, you know, some of the risk factors here coming from things that you may not potentially be able to have uh, ability to make changes to, because these are things that you can't change because they're coming from um, diseases that you have no decision that you had this disease, you know? So that's very different from lifestyle factors, which are things like not having enough physical activity, having a diet that's low in fruit and vegetables, a low fiber and a high fat diet or a diet high in processed meats, overweight and obesity. So she talked about maintaining a healthy weight, which is correct. You don't want to be overweight or obese. Uh, alcohol consumption and tobacco use. I don't think she uses this type of language though. I think she just says maintain a healthy weight. I think they tried to be polite on that one. It is a risk factor, that alone. So it's important to point that out, you know, that that is going to be an actual risk factor, not just, you know, your physical, you know, it's differently presented. Okay, Let's get back to these two who went to the Cola Guard Classic and got educated. Drink. We're not. But you, you need to understand that putting a lot of alcohol in your body it leads to liver disease, which further increases your risk of cancer. And there's some guidelines for moderate, moderate drinking, which we're going to talk about in that video. But the benefits of reducing your alcohol intake or abstaining is good. I enjoy seeing the video because I'm sure it's full of good statistics and cited sources. We had the World Health Organization put there. I guess that was a citation. Going to help reduce your risk for cancer. Absolutely. Now, the other thing that, you know, there's, there's a lot that this affects and that's smoking. Smoking cigarettes is definitely linked to an increased risk of colon cancer and other cancers. So it has numerous carcinogens in it. It increases inflammation in the body. It can damage your DNA, which leads to cancer. So quitting smoking can re definitely reduce cancer risk over time. Now, listen, don't forget to stay to the end because we are going to give you three steps that you can do right now to be proactive. Okay, so the next big... Okay, they have to get that hook because they want to keep you watching because they're pros. I'm terrible. I can wander off researching stuff and forget where I am. And this is a long video. But this is important to me. If you watch to the end, I'll be shocked. <laughs> I'll be shocked if I get 500 views on this video.
big topic that contributes to colon cancer is just the general term obesity. Yep. Being overweight or obese oh. is a significant risk factor to colon cancer. Oh, good for Jody. She she's touching the hard topics here. I thought she was just going to talk about weight management, but no, she's going to pop into the obesity. Okay. Don't wish they had cited some sources on their page instead of like how they're going to try to get people for copyright if they dare to criticize or make commentary about their uh, fair use material. Excess body fat produces inflammation, higher levels of insulin and insulin like growth factors can promote tumor growth and weight management strategies are critical at this stage of life. So having about, I guess they're trying to prep up to do a diabetes mellitus type two video because you know, I had a friend who got diagnosed, and I'm not trying to belittle what happened to their son, but they seem very cheerful for a couple that had a son that just got a really bad stage four cancer diagnosis. I'm surprised that this upbeat and needing to make content. I just, I find it shocking. I hope they keep us updated with their son's progress. Balanced diet yep. and exercise is really what we're talking about here. And talk to your healthcare provider. If you are overweight, I forget the number. Uh, the BMI number? Yeah, I think if you're 30 pounds over your standard weight, you're considered obese. Maybe it's a little bit more than that. But Americans are more overbese than any other country. I think that's, that's over true. Obese? Over obese? Obese. 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 All right. Well, I, it's it's good to know that they got some, some solid statistics there. And I didn't go into the obesity statistics for this video. <laughs> But I'm sure I could debunk those statistics pretty quickly, or at least give correct statistics. <laughs> They're blowing my mind. And I agree with this. I don't eat red meat either uh, because it takes a long time to digest. That's why I love the carnivore diet. I'm like, how long does that meat take sit in the colon? It can't be good. You need those vegetables to move that stuff out of that system. You need the roughage. It's stuck in there. Not to be TMI. Meat consumption. Mm. Red meat, high intake of red meat is associated with an increased risk of colon cancer. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of comments on this because we tend to get a lot of comments when right. we talk about red meat. Remember, we're talking about high intake of red meat, not right. just- Which we used to do. Which is most Americans to overeat. I promise you, the size and the portions of the meat and the amounts they eat it times in a day is definitely more than probably recommended in guidelines. So I know people get upset because they love their meat, but unfortunately, because it does take an extremely long amount of time to digest through the colon, the, the gastric system comparatively to fruit and vegetables, it tends to sit and there, it needs to be moved out with the fiber and you don't get the fiber through the meat. And everyone who professes the carnivore diet, I don't think they really understand how the gastric system works. They just see weight loss. Sometimes, you know. Anyway. I don't know if I ever was a high red meat intake person. Well, I interrupted you. So what do you consider high? You know, well, three I mean, nights if, a if week? you ate, you know, a hamburger every day for lunch and a steak every night for dinner, okay. I mean, that's pretty high intake, right? But it contains. No, it's actually just it's probably eating the portion sizes. So you could have had one steak. But it depends on what was the size of the steak you ate or the ounces of the hamburger. It could have been one. Was it a double cheeseburger? I think that's just not. I think Jody doesn't want to admit that she may have ate more meat than she realizes. Um, it contains an iron that can promote the formation of carcinogens and compounds. You know, cooking methods like fly, frying or grilling at high temperatures also creates those carcinogens. We and we do like... They just love to throw that carcinogen. And there is obviously evidence that shows that grilling and cooking meats at very high temperatures and that charring that people like actually could be quite carcinogenic. So they are correct with that. But again, I wanted to stick really around the facts about the mortality uh, statistics and some of the risk factor things. Uh, and I see that, uh, you know, I mean, there is correct information, but again, it's not cited and it's going to be hard to convince some of these carnivore eaters out there, but that's fine. We'll do what they want to do. 
All right. Keep going, Jody. Even our vegetables cooked at high temperatures. We do, and we cook a lot. We used to cook a lot out on our grill, and we're really cutting back on that. I, yeah. I haven't found a lot of information that says you should grill your vegetables outside at really high heats because it's good for you. So we're actually really paying attention to the information that's available to us on red meat consumption or cooking it, you know, at high um, temperatures. Right. We eat a lot more chicken, we eat a lot more fish, and we do a lot more plant-based protein. Yeah, like beans and lentils yeah. and things. So the next thing is a big one. And well, I can agree with that. And I, I would certainly suggest people doing that. But I'd like to hear a registered dietitian try to help me balance out this meal or explain to me the science behind these different diseases. And what you know, I'm more interested about that. And Mark mentioned, we just got back from the Cologuard classic and Cologuard is a product that could be used in this. You know, the next one is just lack of regular screening and that's on you, right? I mean, that's on you to push your doctor so that you don't skip regular screenings because that can delay the detection of colon cancer. And it makes. And the doctor is going to let you know if you have a primary care physician or an internal medicine doctor, when you go in to get your checkup, and you're at the age of 45, they're going to ask you if you've had your screenings. And it's going to be in like even in your little my chart thing. And it's going to be up there along with whatever screenings they recommend, also based on gender. So for me, it would be breast cancer screenings. <laughs> and then, you know, obviously the colorectal and other uh, for cervical cancer and all the types of screenings that the U.S. Preventative Task Forces Services, U.S. Preventative Task Force Services, it's a long name, recommend. And so <laughs> it's told to you by the physician. And yes, you do have to make sure that you get those uh, doctors so they can get the screenings for you. It's best to do it like in your birthday months or times you can remember. It makes it harder and harder to treat the further into it you are. Well, one of our kids, um has been suggested to get a colonoscopy because there's, there's something going on, some blockage, maybe whatever. And she's like, eh, I haven't really thought about it. Well, now with Markham, all of our kids, my two other sons all got screenings and they're under, uh, what are they, 32 and 34 they're or something 40, like that, yeah. under 40. Right, because they have a first degree relative, their brother, who's just been given a stage four cancer diagnosis. So they're going to all be eligible for screening now because there's thinking they don't want to, they want to see if there's a genetic link. That's why. And that hopefully all your children are fine. But and hopefully it gets some more thinking about lifestyle, diet and so forth. They got screened. So it's really important, which really leads into the next topic, which is ignoring family history. We now have a family history of colon cancer. So all of our kids are making this really, really important. And we're all sharing the news and we're not sharing the news about Markham to say, oh, poor us, but really Markham is now becoming an advocate. And so is our family to make sure all of you check your family history and check to make sure you're, you're um, getting checked by your doctor. And that's great amongst your family and friends. But when you monetize a YouTube um, video about that and you have affiliate links and everything else, Mark and Jody, that's when it gets kind of wild. And so I wanted just to see if they had monetized the channel. Um, not the channel, sorry. I know the channel was monetized, the video, because they're sharing a very devastating story about their son. And so I'm like, would they have monetized the story about their son's cancer? Well, let's take a look. Here it is. Check if a YouTube channel or video is monetized. Let's see if I can get this down. There we go. The video, The Rise of Colon Cancer and How to Change Your Habits to Protect Yourself is monetized. Oh, I hope they're giving it to all those cancer charities rather than keeping the money on a 139,000 views to themselves. And everybody has a different uh, RPM, revenue per 1,000 views. And so just to give you an idea how much this video could have made with 139,000 views, <laughs> Okay, so 1,000 into 139,000. Here we go. So they say they went under entertainment. Oh, because it was for entertainment and informational purposes only. So it should be under this category, uh, which sits at around a dollar. Okay, 
But I wonder if they sometimes go into people blogs and how to, because they are people talking about retirement. And that would go up a little bit higher. That would be a 350. If it's an actual education video, which this is, you get into a higher rate over here because you have licenses, sir, and you have a background in order to educate people on these topics. If you get into the finance world, and we know that they said that they get finance, but they're not financial advisors, that they can get, because the a lot of times the health would fall under the education banner. So if you do anything about digital marketing or like finance, these are big payouts, like $8 and 20. Like this is definitely the higher revenue. So all of this, there's a couple of tiers for these type. So if you do any of these, so anyone's showing you how to do your YouTube channels and any of those things, probably getting pretty good RPM. Okay. So I'm not sure which category they decided to put this under. Hopefully not education because they have no cited sources and no background to give it. They said entertainment informational technically should be here. But I wonder if they've selected here or if they ever try to get into here because they say they give finance stuff. You know, there's, there's money to be made. And despite their children's diagnoses, Mark and Jody are actually making money from that. Okay, let's get back over to Mark and Jody. <laughs> I just always like to point things like that out because, you know, those are things when you're seeing red flags in creators and their content, especially when they get into the health and wellness space, you're like, what are you gaining from this? Well, you can see quite clearly what they're gaining from on it, quite, quite clearly. And uh, they don't want people to make commentary or criticism about what they're doing. And, you know, I am. And be your own advocate. It really, really is important. And then the last thing we want to talk about is chronic inflammation. You know, conditions that cause chronic inflammation in the colon, like Crohn's disease or colitis, can increase the risk of colon cancer. So understanding, you know, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD is really important. And probably a lot of these people are following up with healthcare providers, you hope, or there's a lot of people that think they have these diseases without diagnoses. It does not mean they don't. They just haven't been correctly or properly diagnosed yet. Because <laughs> you hear it all the time, people say they have this, that, and the other, and you find out they've never been to a doctor. <laughs> so how do you know? I know my body. Yeah, I understand. But have you really found out in order to understand and know your body? <sighs> anyway, I mean, I'm not saying at this point, I just don't like the, the lack of cited information and the fact that they went to this golf tournament and it was sponsored by a pharmaceutical brand, you know, see in healthcare, we look at this stuff and, uh, I don't, you know, they keep flashing up Cologuard. Like they want to make sure that they can probably get some Cologuard AdSense. It's very, very shifty and grifty important and get some regular monitoring for those ibd conditions and with some lifestyle adjustment adjustments you can really reduce the inflammation so let's that's so there was 10 things to look out for or be wary of that cause colon cancer so here's three action steps you can take right now the first thing i'm guessing it was 10 i wasn't counting but <laughs> was it 10 i didn't feel like it was 10 I felt it was a little less but I guess with the three, t I, uh, I didn't know if it was 10. <laughs> I didn't feel like it was 10. I guess they went through all of them. I counted nine on the CDC site other than um, age. And then when I took an age, it became 10. <laughs> so let's look at that real quick. Because I think I did see 10. And I don't know if these were the same 10 that they shared. Okay, so um, it just says it's, it's the risk increases as you get older. So I guess age could be a risk factor, you know, that you can't change. These are the, the risk factors you cannot change. And then, so that would be one for the age, two for the inflammatory bowel disease, three for the family history, four for the genetic syndromes, 
Did they mention genetic syndromes? I know they talked about family history. I don't know if they talked about genetic syndromes. Uh, then we have the physical activity, the diet low in fruit and vegetables, we're at six. At seven, we have the low fiber, high fat diet or the diet processed meats. And then we have the overweight and obesity, the alcohol consumption and the tobacco use. That would be 10. So if they covered all of these, that would be 10. <laughs> and I think they did. So they may have actually hit 10 of the risk factors. But the statistics around the rates of death and so forth and the disease and how it affects men and women were completely wild because I'm not sure where they got them from. Listen to everything that we just said and review and adjust your lifestyle choices. Think about uh, your diet. Don't eat cold cuts anymore. Cut down the red meat. <laughs> because we're your doctors now. No, I'm not saying that people, you know, I just, can we just talk, have these conversations with your friends at dinner rather than you guys trying to monetize it as a YouTube video with no licensure to do so with really bad statistics? God, this is getting a long video, but this was a tough one for me to see these two smug their way through. Cut down on your alcohol, quit smoking. All of these changes you can do right now. Sure, it's hard. Sure, it's different. But you know what? It's your health. So it really is important. The second thing you can do right now is schedule your regular screenings. So you might say, well, wait a second. My insurance is going to pay for it until I'm now over the age of 50. Or I just had one, but I'm not feeling great. Should I have another one? Talk to your healthcare provider. Consult with your healthcare provider. And let them understand what's happening in your body. Listen to your body. And that's great. Go all day. <laughs> and they'll probably agree. But then make sure that if you don't want an out-of-pocket cost, that you make sure that insurance is clearing it. And they may have their different decisions. The insurance companies are very slow to adopt current guidelines. So we're telling you 45. The CDC has put it out. So basically they're telling insurance companies, that's the standard now. So that's the standard you need to have. So I would be surprised since that has changed if insurance companies can get away with 50 now. I would be surprised. But always clear it with your insurance company first or what parts they will and will not cover of the test and, and if there's a limitation in the facilities that you can go to and so forth or if your insurance covers that facility. So I would definitely make sure that you do research here in the U.S., before the actual test. So make sure that one, your insurance covers that particular location and those doctors. So there is homework, unfortunately, you have to do. And it's really about who is carrying your insurance rather than the age. And often, like I said, if the government said that's the age and it's part of the Affordable Care Act, the insurance companies have to follow those guidelines. That's you important. know, at the end of the day, what we're saying is check your shit, right? Yeah. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, that's the tagline. You need to know and you need to push. And don't forget, there are things like Cologuard, which your healthcare provider can recommend to you. You can get a kit and you can check it yourself by sending it into a promise. See, if you have a family history, like with their son, they're going to go straight in for the colonoscopy with visualization, the gold standard. They're not going to mess around with the Cologuard. I know they want to keep promoting it. Oh, God, they really want to be sponsored by Cologuard. They're that would make their day. That would make their day. Exact sciences. So the screenings are really important. And the third thing you can do, and this is what we're doing um, as a couple, individuals, and as a family, get educated on this topic and then engage. Share everything you've learned with family and friends. That's why we did this video. This Family and friends, not to a wide public audience where you have terrible statistics and no background in health. Share it with your family and friends on Facebook, on your private page, not on your monetized YouTube channel where you tell people off for uh, fair use. Makes you seem grifter-like. This is such an important topic for everyone to talk about. It's the second leading cause of death among men and women combined. Okay, It's fine. the second leading cause of death for women right behind breast cancer. Uh, no, no. It's not. It's pancreatic. So they, he finally mentioned the pot combined. Very different, okay? Very different when you're looking at statistics. Language is important. And how the statistics are derived are important. 
It's not. It's the fourth for women in death. Is he talking about mortality? Keep going. This is a critical, in the cancer scope. In the cancer scope. So this is really important. Get out. What's the cancer scope? What's a cancer scope? In the cancer scope. Is that what you're going into now? Because Mark and Jody are experts. They're talk about it. Talk to your kids. To talk to your friends. There's there's two great resources we're going to put in the links below. And there's so many more. But the two that we uh, are familiar with now is the CCA, which is a colon cancer alliance, right. which is a big research organization. And the other one is the fight uh, CRC, which is an advocacy group. Yeah, I think that's. And, the and I think the only one they did was the fight CRC. I, I don't think I saw the other link. They have no cited sources, really. They certainly linked Mark's book, though, that you can buy. One that we have the form for. And, and those, are the, those are the two. And listen, our closing challenge to you is really simple. Check your shit. Yeah, check your shit. <laughs> listen, if you enjoyed this video, we hope. And that's my closing challenge for my uh, uh, viewers too, actually. Uh, Mark and Jody is check to make sure uh, when you're looking at uh, anything that is involving health and wellness that you check out to make sure that these people are actually educated and they're actually giving out correct information. Some of it was good information, but these are not the people I want delivering it. They need to stick with their family and friends, not to a YouTube wider audience, and then get upset if people want to make any commentary on their, their content. That And monetizing their son's really bad diagnosis too is in really tacky bad taste in my opinion. All right, let's look at just the one last, a couple of things, and we're going to wrap this up because I didn't expect it to be this long, but I had a lot of information that I needed to educate people around ensuring that you do really double check who are you getting your information from. Are these the people that you really want to be getting your health information from? Are these the people that you have instilled confidence in you after you've seen how they've misled people, scared people, and have used statistics badly and not cited correct sources? And then they've mentioned multiple times a pharmaceutical product from a, and, and the name of the uh, company that actually is manufacturing that product. And they don't understand what the ethics in that come along. So that to me is problematic. <laughs> all right. Let's sadly, sadly take a look at what all some of the leading causes of death here in the United States. Like I said, I would recommend always going to similar sites uh, in your own nation just to double check your own. Here we have. Sadly, all causes, and that's just everybody, you know, all the number of, of deaths uh, based on diseases. And coming in at number one, sadly, is diseases of the heart. Unfortunately, heart disease is still leading. And these are death rates uh, from 2022. So it does take a little bit of time sometimes to gather all the information. And this is coming from the National Center for health statistics, and I can cite all of these for you. So we are looking here at diseases of the heart. We have malignant neoplasms, which are cancer, is the second. Then we have accidental unintentional injuries. We can see the rates from 21 to 22. Sadly, heart disease is increasing, cancer is increasing, accidental deaths are increasing, the big panini is decreasing. Uh, we have strokes, which kind of can sometimes link to the heart disease, sadly. Uh, that's increasing. Uh, the lower respiratory diseases are increasing. The Alzheimer's disease, obviously, we're seeing an increase in that with the aging populations. Diabetes mellitus, they haven't classified into type 1 or type 2, but that's coming in at number 9. We're actually seeing a decrease. That's good. Keep going. But that does play on the poor old heart disease, too. Oh, then we have our kidney diseases here. Uh, that's increasing, too. That's not good. 
And that can come through from the diabetes too. I mean, a lot of these can be linked um, together sometimes. Uh, and as comorbid conditions. And then we've got obviously the, the 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 liver diseases and the cirrhosis. You know, this is coming probably potentially through through alcohol use, and that's actually coming down. So that's good news. <laughs> All right, guys, I was going to try to finish out with some more um, interesting things. So I just want to let you go. We talked a little bit. You know, they talked about obviously making sure that you make. Uh, changes in your diet, you making healthy choices around doing more physical activity, keeping your healthy weight, limiting the alcohol consumption, avoiding tobacco. So what they're basically saying is the risk factors that you can minimize, make sure that you do. There's all the things that are giving information about the symptoms. What should I know about screening, the different screening tests, even list here questions to ask to your doctor. There's even a colorectal cancer quiz here that you can quickly take. And it says getting screened for colorectal cancer can help you prevent the disease. Absolutely true. Next, if you don't have any symptoms, it means you don't have colorectal cancer. That's not true, okay? They, they, you may have polyps that you don't realize that aren't affecting your life. All right, at average risk, that just means normal Joe Schmo. You don't have a family history or certain things. What age screening? Well, CDC says it's 45. And the reason why they push this out so hard is because they want insurance companies to know that you've got to cover this now. It's not the 50 anymore, guys. And then obviously they talk about if you the familial histories and so forth, all those non-changeable uh, factors that could give you a uh, preclusion to the disease. Um, it means that you get in there a little younger. All right. And then stopping. 75. There's no, there's data showing there's not a benefit uh, past this age. That's a conversation between you and the doctor. So that could be difficult to cover through Medicare. You got to talk to the doctor between 76 and 85. And after 85, they're not going to put you at risk of uh, anything in the bowel at that age or just more at risk being under and under anesthesia than the, the this. You know, the risk is just, the harm is more outweighing the risk at this point. Um, there's only a colonoscopy. We know that's false because, you know, Tom and, or I'm sorry, Mark and Jody talked regularly about one of the tests. And then, you know, they're asking, you know, which are the signs and symptoms? Blood in or on your stool? Abdominal pain? aches or cramps that don't go away, weight loss, and you don't know why, which was definitely Jessie Lee Ward, but she thought it was due to her carnivore diet. And it's all of those, obviously. Okay. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you. If you ever got to the end of this video, I would suggest that you make sure that you leave me <laughs> um, what we'd like, some fruits and vegetables down below. I think fruits and vegetables would be something I would love to see in my comment section. All right, guys, I usually try to put up the stuff about my, my YouTube memberships. So I'm going to put on some music. I'm going to let that play out uh, just in case you are interested in joining this community. We get some great uh, professional folks on live panels. I've had registered dietitians. I've recently had a student of psychology who's in her fourth year undergrad and getting ready to take her master's uh, specializing in addictions. So we're always excited to have these conversations. We certainly do appreciate you being here. And uh, like I said, I'm going to play out this video and you guys have an absolutely fantastic weekend and take care.